The high-low stock chart is not available as a pivot chart in Excel. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a workaround to make the interactive stock chart. And I'll also explain why you might want to use this technique. So if you're not familiar with stock charts in Excel, they're a great way to visualize stock data. In this example here, we have the high-low close stock chart. And on this chart, the uh, yellow dot represents the close amount for the day. And the vertical bar here, the top of it represents the high amount. And then the bottom of it represents the low amount uh, for the day. Now, these charts are available as regular charts in Excel. And I have an example of that on this sheet here. However, they are not available as pivot charts. And the advantage of having a pivot chart for this type of chart is that we can make it interactive. So as you see here, I've added slicers to the pivot table and pivot chart. And we can click on these slicers to filter down both the pivot table and pivot chart and then see this information here. So this is great for any type of dashboard or if you have multiple categories or dates that you want to look at with your stock data, it's great to use a pivot chart for something like this. So let's dive in and take a look at how to create this. So the first step is to create a pivot table from our data. And here I have some stock data on the stock data sheet. And I should mention that I'll make this file available for free download and put a link to that in the description below so you can follow along. So with our data here, we want to create a pivot table. Now this data is uh, stock data, daily stock data or stock history data. Uh, it has a high, low, and close columns, which we'll need. It also has a ticker symbol here because we have uh, multiple stocks in this table. Uh, I got this data from Yahoo Finance. There's a lot of different ways to get stock data into Excel, and uh, we'll cover that in a separate video. But you'll want to have your stock data here in a table. Then we'll go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and click Pivot Table. And we'll put this on a new sheet and hit OK. And here we have our pivot table. So since we want to display our uh, high-low chart by day, in this case, because we have daily history, we're going to put the date here in the rows area of the pivot table. Now that's added this grouping here. I typically don't like that, so I'm going to right click ungroup because we want to see every single day and not have those dates rolled up. The next thing we want to do is add our high, low, and close fields uh, to the values area. So you can drag and drop those into the values area, or you can click the checkbox here next to each of those since those contain numeric values, and that'll automatically put those in the values area as we see here. Now, since we have multiple ticker symbols here, we also need to filter for just a single uh, company or symbol. So we can do that by putting the symbol in the filters area. And then in this case here, let's say we just want to see the Microsoft data. We'll go ahead and click that. And now we'll have our high, low, and close amounts uh, by date in our pivot table. The next step is to create the pivot chart. So we're going to go to the Insert tab here, and then we're going to choose uh, Pivot Chart. That'll bring up this window here. If you try and go down to stock, you'll notice that you can't create this chart type with this data. So we can't use a stock chart. We're going to use a workaround and use a line chart instead. So we're going to choose the line chart and you can choose the line chart with markers. Uh, that'll make, it'll save us a step uh, adding those markers in. So we'll go ahead and do that. Hit OK. That will add our chart. As you can see, we have our chart here. It's kind of messy. I'll make it bigger, make it maybe a little bit easier to read. And the first thing I'm going to do is just do some cleanup work here. So I'm just going to right click and choose uh, hide all field buttons. That'll remove all those field buttons to just give a little bit uh, more room to work with. Another thing we can do is uh, kind of zoom in here on this data. And we can do that by right clicking here uh, on the axis, on the Y axis, hit format axis. And over here, we can set our minimum amount to something like uh, around 250, let's say, because there's no values below 250. So we'll just do that for now. And that'll allow us to zoom in and kind of see the variance. And this will make it easier to click on some of these series here to work with them. So now we have essentially three lines for our high, low, and close amounts. And we don't need all of these lines. So what we're going to do first is uh, draw our vertical lines. And we're going to do that by selecting the close series. So you can just click on one of the dots to select the sum of closed series. If it's difficult to do or see, you go to the Format tab here. And on this dropdown, you can also choose sum of close. And that'll make sure it selects the proper series. Then we're going to go to the Design tab. And we're going to choose Add Chart Element. 
And from this drop down here, we want to go to lines, and then we're going to choose high low lines. And that's going to draw the vertical lines there between the high and the low amounts. And it does that through the close amount. It's hard to see right now, but that's essentially what's happening here. So now what we want to do is hide the high and low lines uh, that are drawn there. So we can do that. Again, we go to the Format tab here. I'm first going to select uh, the series for the sum of high. So that'll select that. Then for Shape Fill, I want to change that to No Fill. And that'll remove the uh, fill on the dots there, or the markers. And then for Shape Line, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to say No Outline. And now, as you can see, it's removing the uh, line there, that blue line that we had before. It's essentially invisible. And then we just need to repeat that process for the sum of low. So we'll select that one. Here we can just hit the buttons here for uh, no fill and shape outline. And that will again hide those. And now we can't see that orange line as well. It's still there, it's just not no longer visible. Now we have the sum of close. And we'll go back to that one. I could have done this step first. But we just want to uh, make the line invisible. So for shape outline, we're going to uh, set that to no fill. And we'll keep the fill uh, for the marker. You can also change the fill color. It's currently that gray color. If you want to make it yellow like I had at the beginning, you could do that. Or we can have blue or any color you want to choose there. Uh, you can do that as well. And so now we have the basis here for our high low close chart uh, using a pivot chart. So the next step is to insert the slicers. And before we do that, there's a few other formatting uh, cleanup items that uh, I want to do here. Uh, one, I want to remove the legend because it's not really relevant now. So I'm just going to click on it and then hit the delete key to remove the legend. The other thing I wanted to point out is that you can change the formatting of the vertical line as well. You can select it here or select it from the drop down in uh, the format tab. And if we go to the format tab, you can change the uh, color of the line. So if you want it maybe more of a gray color, we can do that. You can also, uh, if you right click on it and then choose format high low lines, you can change the width of it as well or the thickness of the line. So if it's difficult to see, uh, you can bump up the thickness of it there uh, to change that as well. And that might make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, the last thing is we'll add a title here. You always want to have a title on your chart. So I'll put the chart, chart title up there as well. So now we'll add this slicer and we'll go to the analyzer options tab and then choose insert slicer. And in this case, I want to add two slicers, one for the symbol since I have multiple symbols, and then another for the month name. I have a separate column for the month name, and I might want to filter by month name. So we'll hit OK there. That'll add our slicers to the sheet. And then we'll just uh, quickly move those off the chart here. Just move them over here. And of course, you can spend extra time to line those up. But now we've made this interactive with the slicers. So if we click on a slicer here, that will filter down the pivot table and the pivot chart. Now, one important thing here, since I changed the minimum bound of the Y axis, uh, we're not seeing the data here because the data is not between 250 and 500. So we'll need to set that back. So we can left click the Y axis and then right click, right click format axis. It's already appeared over here. And for minimum, we're just going to reset this to auto. So that'll change it back to zero. And then as we filter this down, so if we go filter uh, by month, the uh, auto axis in this case will change. Now the minimum is 130. So Excel's recognized uh, that we don't have data below this and kind of gives us the ability to zoom in there on the data to see the information a little better. And then one final tip, I also like to turn the grid lines off on any sheet that contains uh, charts. So we'll go to the view tab here. Grid lines is disabled because I have a chart selected and not a cell. So I'll select the cell. Then we can check the grid lines checkbox to turn off the grid lines. And that just gives the sheet a cleaner look. So that's a way to create a uh, stock chart with a pivot chart. There's multiple ways to do this in Excel, and this is one way to go about it. I also wanted to give a shout out to John, a member of our Elevate Excel training program for raising this question, which inspired uh, this video and this solution here. So thank you, John. I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but thanks to John for this. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.